Hello everyone, today you're looking at a panoramic radiograph of a 12-year-old patient. As you can see, there's a lot going on in the mandible and we're going to identify these specifically three interesting areas and re-examine them in a CBCT scan. I think first of all, um, I hope you all see that there is a, a prominent radiolucency in the anterior mandible extending from uh, number 22, 3, 4, 5, and up to about 26. And then we have impacted to number 29 um, and uh, over retained primary molar. And on the other side, we have a primary molar but with loss of con congenitally uh, missing number 20. And then there is a radio opaque region which we want to further examine in Comim CT. So now let's go ahead and look at this areas. Why don't we start out with in examining anterior mandible. So once again from this axial view, you can see that the lesion extends from 22 and crosses the midline and all the way to number 26, which is located right here. And from uh, this view as well as the sagittal view, uh, it clearly occupies the entire buccal lingual, buccal lingual width of the ridge and causing the thinning of the adjacent cortical plate. So here is the buccal cortical plate and it's been thinned significantly so as the other side and that's verified from this axial view as well. If you look at the coronal view, um, what we can see here is it's a scalloping nature between the roots on Comim CT, which wasn't uh, as readily visualized on panoramic radiograph. So as I scroll back and forth, um, you can see that it's scalloping around the apices of these teeth. However, uh, as you see here, as well as from panoramic radiograph, there's no obvious signs of root displacement or resorption at this point. Alright, um, next thing I want to show you was the impacted premolar that we saw previously. So here is tooth number 29. I know it looks like number 20, keep in mind it's flat. So this is 29 with its crown abutting the mesial root of number 30 as well as the distal root of uh, T. And um, let's see, um, looks like it has caused a root resorption. As well as, I think, very early uh, or mild resorption of this root, which is, I think, better visualized here. There's a slight indentation in the root outline, suggesting there is a minimal root resorption. Also, uh, again, keep in mind this patient is 12 years of age and the apex is wide open. And what that tells me is that as the root continues to develop, it may cause further resorption on this molar, but possibly it may cause even resorption on this premolar. Lastly, let's go ahead and look at this radio peg area. If it wasn't well visualized on cone beam, excuse me, panoramic radiograph, it's very well visualized uh, under cone beam CT scan. Um, the border is very crisp and clear. The surrounding trabecular bone is relatively, sp uh, the bone density is relatively sparse and it's, and then it extends from the buccal cortex to the lingual cortex and as best as we can tell, there's no expansion and it just simply blends in with the surrounding bone. And um, let's look at its relationship to the, uh, to the root, this distal root. And as best as I can tell, the PDL space appears intact, meaning this opacity is not arising from the root surface of this, uh, this root. 
but in fact these are just separate uh, entities. Um, yeah, and uh, as, I, as I have already pointed out, there's a congenitally missing tooth number 20 in this case. So what we're going to do is, based on this radiographic appearance, it's fairly clear that this you're, what you're looking at is an area of osteosclerosis, also known as idiopathic osteosclerosis. And then we're going to um, have to do a biopsy in this anterior mandible and get a defini definitive diagnosis. Um, just from my initial uh, view, I, th I think this lesion has a high chance of being a traumatic bone cyst uh, or simple bone cyst. They're the same uh, entities. Uh, based on its scalloping feature and the fact that it's not causing displacement or resorption, it's behaving very nicely. Um, but it's I think it definitely warrants a biopsy to make sure that it is what it is rather than you know this being some type of some other potential cystic or tumoral lesions in the anterior mandible. Thank you very much for your attention and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.